Hey everybody, we are joined by the band Cliff Diver. We have six of the seven members here with us. I'm gonna let you all introduce yourself real quick. Okay. Howdy y'all, I'm Joey. I'm Bree. And my name is Tyler. I'm Elliot. I'm Donnie. Good morning, my name is Matt. Allegedly. And we're missing Gilbert. Where, where is Gilbert? Oh, Let's Gilbert, know. Gilbert's on an ambulance saving lives or whatever right now. <laughs> so EMT, he's a, yeah, he's an EMT. He's, he's not just on it. <laughs> he volunteers <laughs> on an ambulance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Ambulance somewhere right yeah, now. He's we're, we're hoping he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys are a really fun group, and I'm thinking like touring must be like a ton of fun. Is it all, are you always getting along like this? Oh, all the time. We've or never it, fought. <laughs> never? never? Never disagreed even. We thought about it once and we're like, you know what, guys? Our love is more important than us not sleeping in three days and not being able to decide where to eat because there's eight of us. Brianna, and I feel like you have something to say about that. Revisionist history is a funny thing. <laughs> um, no, it's we do. We have a blast and it is, um, it is very much like having roommates in the smallest house you can possibly imagine um, with none of the comforts of home except what you can bring with you. And it is a very unique experience to go through together for sure. So how did you all meet? You're all from the Tulsa area. How'd you meet? How'd you form the band? Uh, yeah, I played in bands with most of these guys growing up over the past like 10 years, I'd say. Me and Gil started a thing back in 2014. Um, and then, yeah, I kind of- much less? Yeah. Uh, I kind of met the rest of these guys <laughs> playing in bands around Tulsa, so I kind of put together the ones that I like the most, and, and uh, yeah, did that in 2018. <laughs> so these are and, your favorites, uh, what you're saying. These are my favorite people. <laughs> um, this is the all-star team right here. So, Talk about the name Cliff Diver. Is there, what does it mean? Is there a deeper meaning to it? Um, so Casa Bonita you know, um, has the, the cliff divers. And um, I, if I remember the story right, Joey was weeping and writing um, his memoir in a Casa Bonita and saw the cliff diver come down. I've only ever heard the story, but it was very moving. Joey, can you? Are we talking about the restaurant? Yeah. That's no longer here in Tulsa? Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't even have cliff divers there. It was just a random guy cliff diving in there. and. That's what we decided uh, to name it after that. R.I.P. That's Casa not, Benita. I mean, it's named after a Plus 44 song called Cliff. <laughs> yeah, he's still alive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, no, it is, um, the, the Casa Bonita is my revisionist history. When I joined the band, that's what I thought it was named after. Um, but actually, there is a song um, by a band that features one of the members of Blink-182, and it's called two members, and it is called Cliff Diving. And so that was the original um, inspiration for the name of the group, but we kind of just make it up now. So sometimes it's from Catcher in the Rye, sometimes it's from Casa Bonita. It has become a lot of things. It's evolved into it. I have a lot of meeting for all of us. I like it. A lot of fun all the time. I all feel like maybe time. not a serious entirely much. Except, I mean, in our songs, and I think that's kind of the funny thing is people meet us and it's like, oh, they're fun, they're happy people, and then they put on the album and it's, it, you know, it's that we, we laugh so we don't cry sometimes. <laughs> well, so speaking of that, Joe, uh, Brianna and Joe, you both have really been open about mental health struggles and you put that into your music. Can you talk about how that's been therapeutic, not only to you all, but also to your fans who listen to the music? Oh, for sure. I think one reason why we are so goofy and silly is we have serious conversations about mental health and we don't want to scare off people who've never really dealt with these things. So we present it as this funny kind of fun thing before they know it, they're discussing deep emotional things. For me personally, you know, the band saved my life. I, I quit drinking two and a half years ago and a large part of it was writing our first album and looking at the band and going, how many songs about being an alcoholic can I write before I have to quit drinking? And we realized that was the limit of them. So I, I think by us being able to talk about these things openly, be able to talk about mental health, depression, suicide, substance abuse, all these kind of things. It not only liberates us a bit by being able to put it out and not hold it in, but other people, I think that's probably the thing that keeps us going the most is even when we have hard days on the road where everything's gone wrong, after the show, someone will come up and say, you know, this meant something to me. Like, this meant something to me. We, I remember one day we were 
in San Antonio and it was a rough day. And we were like, we don't want to be here. And afterwards, somebody told us that one of our songs helped them get through cancer treatment and that there was a year since they'd had any cancer and they'd been in remission for a year and it was the song they listened to every day. And so little things like that show that the music's bigger than what we do. I mean, it's something that gets to help uh, bring life instead of destroy that life. And I think that's important for all of us from the music we grew up listening to, which didn't have a lot of hope at the end of it. But ours is, well, the story doesn't end there. It yeah. keeps going. Well, and it sounds like you resonate with your fans. So it kind of started as you're doing it for yourself, but now it's grown into so much more. He said no, he does not. not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a good point, though, that the, the music has made a measurable change in our lives individually. Um, and that's, that's one of the best parts about tour for us, too, is getting to meet the people who, who come out and have these stories for us. And it keeps us going, honestly, because the change in your own life is one thing. But when you get to go out there and see that there is a me measurable difference being made that's bigger than you, bigger than your life, and that it's extending you know, past what you could have ever imagined, that's, that's a beautiful thing. And that's really what I feel like fuels us, especially on the road, is meeting people and their stories and getting to connect over this music. And as heavy as it can be sometime, sometimes, it's, you, you need someone to know that heaviness as well. And we get a lot of that on the road. Well, Abby, the producer, summed it up nicely. The essence, I think, of what your band is, is about choosing life. Your music is about choosing life. And when you're on stage, you yell out affirmations. Is that what I understand? It's, yeah, we, we like to invite people into the process. Because we've had people come up to us who've been like, no one's ever told me that things are going to be OK before. No one's ever told me that things can get better. Especially during the pandemic, it, it was hard in a lot of ways for people that it never had been hard before. People were experiencing anxiety and depression on levels that were never, you know, really in the social media age happening. And so there was this big influx of need for people to be told that things could get better and things could be all right. So we have moments in a lot of our songs that, that are a moment for people to join in and us together say, listen, we're on our way now. Like, there's no place that we'd rather be. Like, we're together. We're in this together, and I think that those moments are not only special for the crowd, but for us, because it reminds us every time, I know I'm good enough, enough for anyone, and finally myself. And some nights that's truer than other nights, and on those nights I cry, and they all go, they're like, oh my gosh, he's crying again. And, <laughs> but I get caught up. Crying's good. I, I get caught up. Crying's good. You need to do it. So let's go back to May of 2023. I mean, it's been six months since the accident. Were you all in the van together? Um, everyone here, uh, Bree and Gil, uh, they were flying out. So we were driving to Vegas for a festival that we were going to play. And so, yeah, five of the seven members was in the van when the accident happened. Do you remember it? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> so it was a link of a chain comes through the window and punctured two arteries in your neck? Yeah, my jugular and my carotid. And uh, if it didn't lodge in the way it did, I would have bled out and I wouldn't still be here today. A freak accident, a miracle that you survived. How has it changed you, your life, and really all of you? I'm, I'm sure a near-death experience for one member of the band impacts the whole band. Yeah, I mean, even for me personally, it, it goes to show that really anything can happen to anyone at any moment. So uh, just make sure to you know love your friends and family and do what you love doing. Have you put it into your music? Oh yeah, always. I put, I put in always. Yeah. Always put it. <laughs> what do you want your fan, or do you have more to, to, to expand on that, <laughs> Brianna? I was going to say, I think um, with this happening so soon before writing and recording a new album, I, I think we're all kind of interested to see what comes out of it, because sometimes you don't know. You know, we can write as much as we want before the studio, but once we're in there and we're getting deep into sort of molding and creating these songs, it you know, things come out and it's all real. And so I think we're all interested to see kind of how it affects the music moving forward. I know touring, um, it sort of infused us with a, a gratitude. Cause like you said, it was, it was actually a near death experience for everyone because Tyler was driving at the time of the accident. So they had to crawl on top of him when they thought he was gone and, you know, stop the van at 80 miles an hour on the highway. Cause he was, you know, their driver had gotten, at the time thought he got shot, I believe at first and um, so it near death experience for everyone and honestly with our seeing what it's done for our touring has been so amazing we we got in the van i remember the first day after the accident 
And Tyler climbed up in the driver's seat and was like, I got to do this. And wow. we were all behind him and we said, sure. And so he drove the first shift and let's try this we again. let's so, try this so. again. <laughs> yeah. Let's try this again. And it was amazing. And I think it infused a new sense of gratitude and energy and and just an, a new joy to what we do because we shouldn't have been there. We should not have been on tour a month and a half after he was in the hospital with doctors, a carousel of doctors coming through the room going, this dude should be dead. Yeah. You know, it got a little old, honestly. <laughs> I feel like I had the hospital after yeah. a while. Called it the luckiest unlucky thing to ever happen. Well, I'm glad you're, you're here today to, t to talk about it. I mean, what a terrifying moment for you all. It was not one of the most chill moments, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Like, yeah. not super chill. Sometimes we still, driving at night, like we'll swerve a little bit and then you have seven heads up the middle of the oh, aisle going, Yeah. okay. Yeah, white knuckling Everyone's the having panic wheel. attacks, but then when we almost do get in a wreck, like that guy on the bridge who swerves over, everyone's just laughing, going, ah, oh, <laughs> we almost died right there. But it's good. I mean, I, I think being able to process that kind of thing really does, like Bree said, give you a, a whole new lease on things. You go, I'm so lucky to be able to do this and we won't stop. Can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop, as Tyler says. So yes. I, I have a question, Joey, on a lighter note. Does your mom have strong opinions about the music and, like, not keeping quiet what her favorite and least favorite songs are? There is one song that I wrote uh, a while ago where I mention her name, um, and it's about her, you know, my mental health struggles and how she's frustrated almost by them. And, and then I wrote this song about how my dad had saved my life, and she was just like, okay. You know, this, this is not, this is not. <laughs> well, when we first started, I, when I was very much active in my uh, substance journey, um, when she'd hear, see some of the songs live, she'd be like, yeah, yeah, that's very much, uh, very much a real thing. So she, she likes the music a lot more now. Good. Now Good. that I'm like, and guess what? You know, it gets better. <laughs> so. so I think this is cool. Uh, it's Joey and Tyler are in a side band. So talk about emo karaoke at Vanguard. It, like, fans get to come up on stage and sing with you, and you guys are playing in the background? Absolutely. Tyler, uh, there's four, four people in the Dom Talongs, and I'm the host usually, and I'll sing harmonies as we have people come up and get to be the rock star. So we'll have anywhere from three to 500 people there. Everyone's singing along, singing songs from the early 2000s, and really gives you that opportunity to feel like you're the lead singer of a band. And we love doing it as kind of like a service to the community where we, we get a lot of joy from helping other people access that joy. And I think it's very similar to what we do in Cliff Diver in that aspect, but we, we just love it. Bands have been started. Yeah, li literally bands start because someone will sing and people are like, I needed a singer. Someone needs to hire that Nick kid still because that kid's got a crazy voice. <laughs> I think it's ironic because I hate karaoke personally, but I play in a karaoke <laughs> band. It's a different type it of is. karaoke. It's a different vibe. It's yeah. more of like an event, a big party. And, but yeah, February 24th, Vanguard. Awesome. Okay. Uh, anything else that you want your fans to know? You're working on a new album, um, hopefully maybe touring at some point. What's, anything else for 2024? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a whole new year. It's a whole new cliff diver for sure. And um, I would say, you know, just uh, stay connected with us because we are we have a lot to announce. We, we were able to talk about the, uh, the album right now. There's a lot we can't and a lot that we're working on. Um, but, you know, just stay close and keep watching. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say uh, shout out the racks. You can get a, a good item of clothing or two there. That's for provided most of my wardrobe. Sean, this is for you, buddy. I want my $10. Um, but no, we have a lot we're working on, and we're really excited to, to see what 2024 brings. Because 2023 was a crazy year. Yeah. Um, it's been really cool to see us kind of go from a, a local band to someone who's on the national stages. And we went international this year, played in Canada. Well, some of us did. Some of us didn't get our passport in time. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Even though it was his idea to go to Canada, and then he applied for his passport first and didn't get it by the time we went to Canada, so we all went. We tried to sneak him in and... Maybe you can work that out for 2024. We're hoping, we're hoping. <laughs> Here's to, we'd love to go back to Toronto. Thank you guys so much for being here. We're gonna link all of your information over at newson6.com, but we appreciate your time. You're so much fun and best of luck in 2024. We also wanna shout out our fans, say that you are loved, you are worthy, don't give up. Things do get better. You just have to invest in yourself and you're worth it, baby. You're worth it. <laughs>